be doing that now. Um, that looks a little bit dangerous there. Are you sure you want to... Because I've got a... Um, hello and welcome to the stream. Twitch tells me I'm now live. Um, so, a little bit of powder there. That wasn't really me talking to someone else. It was just me trying to be funny. And I think as these streams have proven, and indeed my entire life has proven, I probably shouldn't try to be that funny. Because I'm not. But in any case, we're going to return to what we do, uh, what we did uh, yesterday. Uh, the couple of notes first. First of all, my blood sugar is a bit low. I know you don't care. Uh, but it does mean that if, uh, if I suddenly become hypoglycemic, I may have to leave the stream early. I will try not to do that. Um, I, I don't feel hypoglycemic right now, but just FYI. Okay, so yesterday I figured out that we, we actually looked at umbral eclipses first, uh, as though they were more important, and, and for us they, they, they sort of will be, because that's what we're going to be looking at. But it turns out that every umbral eclipse is also going to have a penumbral cone like this. So actually we probably should have been looking at penumbral eclipses first, and then saving umbral eclipses as a special case. Uh, by the way, I didn't, um, I didn't mention it earlier, but if you continue these lines, uh, these lines that form the umbral cone, what you have here is called the anti-umbra. And what that means is that someone here would see T uh, transiting or annularly eclipsing S. In other words, you can still see some of S because T isn't big enough to block it anymore, um, but it is still, you know, it could be an annular eclipse, it could be uh, a, called a transit maybe, uh, something like of that nature. Uh, and that is pr interesting because, you know, we do want to sort of uh, capture, uh, for other reasons, annular eclipses. So we will go into that uh, a little bit too. For right now, we're going to focus more on the penumbra, which is the important thing. And um, let's let's see. Did I say what I need to say? I did. Um, okay. So now we could just say whether a planet is in an umbral eclipse or not. That that would be a zero one kind of thing, and it w would work. I mean, C spice will let us do booleans and stuff like that. Um, I want to do a little bit better here. I'm going to go ahead and draw a, uh, a sort of a. Uh, A booyah. Oh, no, 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 no. Not that. Didn't want that. Still didn't want that. A good tool, by the way. This is, even though it, it sometimes is not super intuitive. Circle with center through points. I think this is what I want. Yes. And now I want to go back to this mode here, and I want to... This is not... Uh, this is, We're not going to use this sphere a very... Um, very... Um, oh, come on. We're not going to use the sphere as a real uh, mathematical point. We're just using it for some. Uh, we're just using it for some. Uh, for some very easy test cases. Can I actually? No, I don't want to. Show this Yay! I have this. Okay, fix. Not what I wanted. Hang on. I maybe need to fix the. Uh, fix the. All right. We're going to go ahead and create another one with a fixed radius. Again, this is just for demonstration purposes. We're not going to use it mathematically. Uh, center and radius, center there, radius of 2. That's probably going to be too big. Um, yep, didn't want that. Radius of 1, I think. Um, um, where's your radius? Radius says where? Oh, come on! <laughs> I'm sure I can change your radius. I can change your radius, baby. That is something that... Oh, actually, it was the point E. Sorry. Um, we should be able to change the uh, circle E, and we're going to say 1. Solid. And we're going to get rid of this. Um, yeah, I didn't mean to do that. Undo. There's, is there an undo on this thing? I don't think there is, actually. Uh, is there... I have no idea what the F I'm doing. That's pretty much the entire stream. All right, one more time. One and no, oh god damn it. Okay, so this is good. Just shows you that even to get set up to show you something that's not important, it takes me a lot of time. And this time we're going to say don't show label, but we are okay. I think we're now good to go. Okay. So anyway, my point is, if the um, if the planet is like right here, the, the planet being eclipsed is right here. We want to say that's a zero eclipse because it is. If the planet is right here, in other words, it's sort of right along the line of S and T, 
we want to say that that's a one eclipse. Let's write some of this down, actually. For me, not for you. Uh, no eclipse but touching, and one equals cent... Oh, this is what's called a central eclipse. It's actually a little bit more than that. It's a central eclipse because S and the point through S and T touches the planet. Technically, this is also a central eclipse. It's a central eclipse for these points here, this point and this point. Uh, but it's a doubly central eclipse for us because it's right on the, on the middle. What we do want to do, though, is we sort of want to graduate from, uh, you know, zero here to one here, and even to, like, negative numbers out here uh, where there's no eclipse, uh, because it sort of tells us how close are we to an eclipse. Um, kind of, sort of, maybe. There are issues here. One issue is uh, we're currently determining whether uh, you're in a penumbral eclipse by seeing if you're within this penumbral cone here. Well, guess what? Even though this, I've drawn this too big, you could, in theory, be over here behind the planet T and still be in the quote-unquote penumbral eclipse. I mean, in reality, this, you know, if you wanted to draw just the penumbral cone, you wouldn't be drawing this part or this part. I just did that because we want to see, you know, where the point P is and we want to sort of continue this on and have this angle and all that good stuff. Um, but in reality, this is not part of the penumbral cone. It is, it is just, uh, so this is a special case we have to deal with over here. Um, and this is not a special case we need to deal with, actually. Um, so, so there's, there's that. Okay, so what we want to say is when, uh, so we'll first just say in our normal case, if the angle between, again, we have PT going in the wrong direction for, for this angle thing, but we're going to say, you know, the direction along the x-axis, which is going to be PT, negative PT angle E. Um, let's write this down. So if you have uh, negative PT, uh, I'll, I'll say angle. I was going to say dot product, but it's actually the dot product divided by the norms, and I don't want to confuse anyone. So the angle between PT, I, I realize there's no one actually here, and the planet, and planet is equal to, this is very informal. This is obviously not a math equation. Um, no, well, we don't. We don't just want it to the center because we we do have this little bit of extra. Uh, you know, we just want the edge touching. So that would be uh, zero. Angle of the planet is zero. Is uh, Pang minus uh, let's call it ra radang, the radius angle, um, is touches is equal to the umbral angle. Um, in other words, you take this angle here, subtract off this angle here and you just touch the umbra, that's a zero. Uh, and then it's zero, if the angle is zero between PT and this planet, we want to also, we want to return one central eclipse. So what we sort of want to return in, in you know, in, in, um, in terms of um, sort of a ratio between them, uh, one minus, watch me get this wrong, um, there's going to be a special case where it crosses the uh, the center line, um, but I don't think that's a huge deal. Um, one minus. So we want. Well, actually, let's look at this just very directly. So if you're at pang minus radang, zero to zero is equal goes to one. I won't say zero equals one because of course it doesn't. So that should be a really simple ratio there. It should be one minus. Um, Planet angle over Pang minus Radang. Um, so if the planet angle, oh, ooh, 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 ooh. planet angle over, planet angle over, um, no, I don't quite have that right. And I think I actually mean to do a plus here because um, the angle of the planet as being measured from from PT here is actually going to be uh, the angle of the radius plus the angle of the planet. That's the, the sort of total angle there. So if it's at, uh, if the angle here is the umbral angle plus <coughs> the radius, uh, it is it's just barely touching. And so that is the um, planet angle, um, you know. Um, and I still don't think I've got this quite right. Um, so let's see, um, and I'm, I'm actually, 
I actually said planet M at the umbral angle, of course. So if it's the umbral angle from point P, um, uh, here we go. If the planet has angle of umbral angle, this black line here, plus this little uh, extra angle that's the angle of the radius, we return a zero. So if planet angle, I should delete some of this crap. If planet angle is equal to umbral angle plus um, uh, plus the radius angle, well, we have all these quantities, of course, then return zero. And then if the planet angle goes down to zero, return one. So I think that is what we want. Um, if the planet angle is equal to zero, we return one. Um, so the way to do that is very simple, but I don't know how. It's just a ratio, actually. Uh, it's going to be 1 minus, um, let's see, um, this is probably not correct. Let's find out. Alrighty, so when the planet's over here, the pang is this, pang minus the rad angle is this, over umbral angle is 1, so this returns 0. When this is zero, this obviously returns one, because this is just, um, wait, 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 peg minus radius, oh, no, it doesn't. No, it does not. Because we're looking at the edge radius, but once the, um, but once we've crossed over, to, you know, to where it's closer than the edge radius, we don't want to be looking at that. So this is non-trivial now. Um... So what do we want to do here to kind of, uh, um, to kind of allow for this still to be um, one at this value, but I, th I think we can fix this actually. Um, hang on a second, I'm going. Actually, can we fix this? We should be able to. This is not hard. So if this pang is at um, and we want a zero. This will do it. This might not be the only way to do it, though. Um, hmm. Okay. Do I mean pang? No, I probably don't mean plus over here. And even if I did, it wouldn't help, because when the planet angle is zero, we want a zero. So, so maybe I'm doing this wrong. So, let's see. Um, okay, I'm going to actually resort to doing some actual math. Someone please clap. If the planetary angle is zero, we want to return one. And if the planetary angle is um ang plus rad ang, we want to return zero. So we have these two points, and maybe we can put these in this order. Oh, no, actually, that's not right. We do want to put these in these order. So we have at 0, 1, and um, rad, plus. So here, we have, <laughs> why am I doing this? Y <laughs> equals mx plus b. This, by the way, shows you how poor I am at doing math, just, you know, in case you didn't know. Well, the slope is going to be the rise over the run. The rise is uh, 1. The run is umang plus radang. And then all we need to do is find the y-intercept. Um, and when x, which is the, the angular value, is 0, ooh, this is bad. This should actually be x times this, because the notation I used is, uh, is ambiguous, uh, and people have sort of caught on to this now. Um, so x times this thing, and when x is 0, this is 1. So I think this is actually the correct formula here at the right side. Uh, let's see if that is correct. When x is equal to 0, um, this returns 1, beautiful, because that whole thing becomes 0. And now if x is equal to uh, umang plus rang, radang, umang plus radang, 1, what am I doing? I need a minus there. Did I miscompute the slope? Oh, I did, because the, the rise here is actually negative 1. Okay, so the formula we're looking for is, is negative x, um, and this can actually just be written as that. This. 
Uh, so when x is 0, this is 1, which is good. When x is umang plus randang, not randang, radang, uh, this becomes uh, minus 1 plus 1 is 0. So that's what we're looking for. That's the degree of the eclipse if we ignored our special condition. Now we have our special condition where the damn thing ends up over here and it's still between the, 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 ra the frickin' rat angle is still correct uh, but it's, it's on the wrong side of T. And the way we can do, the way we can sort of measure this is, God, let's, let's see if I can, if I can force this issue. Uh, let's see. I think anywhere in here, in fact, uh, yeah, we, anywhere in here, I'm 99% sure, uh, E is going to be closer to P than T. So all we need to do here is measure the distance between uh, P and T and P and E, and if P, E is less than P, T, we're on the wrong side of the cone. Uh, now that kind of technically applies over here too, because distance is distance. Um, but we don't really care, because if it's over here, it's also not really in the penumbra. Um, but let's see what value we want to return uh, for the special case that P, T is less than P, E, P, E is less than P, T. In other words, the planet is closer than the thing that's, that's eclipsing it. Um, and one idea I had earlier for this is we want to kind of re return the, um, we kind of want to return the angle from T at that point, uh, going in this direction. So not the angle from P, but rather the angle from T. And in fact, you could actually return the angle from T at any time. Hello there, hello, hello. Fierce crocodile, slower, slower, slower. You want me to go slower? Or the stream is slower. Okay, I will go slower. Talk slower. Give me a little bit more on what you mean by the word slower there. And while you answer, I will just relax. Fierce crocodile. Are you a new visitor to my stream? Or No, no, you actually followed me yesterday. So that thank you very much for the follow. Okay. I'll give you about a few. Yes, you. I have to catch up. Okay. Um, unfortunately, there's no easy way to watch catch up to a stream. Uh, because you can't watch a stream while it's live. Once the stream is over, you can watch the recording, um, or I'll post the recording to YouTube. Uh, so instead, um, tell me what questions you have, and I will try to answer them. And I realize this is bad for everybody else who's watching the stream later, but I don't care, uh, because the person in chat is more important than everybody. Okay, now let me think. Okay. No one is watching. I know no one working. No one is working. So we want the radius. Okay. Let me tell you what we're looking for here. Let me go back a little bit. Um, this diagram here, and I will even ask you to, to verify shit. This is the sun. Let's see. And there's supposed to be no intersection. All right. Uh, let me go back a step, and then I'll just... Okay, wait. We want to know if the guy is in the radius. Well, we want to know if the guy... Right. We want to know if E is within this thing that I'm calling the penumbra here. This huge penumbra here, which is everything that's in this region here. Uh, yes, it's like the eclipse. Yes. So we want to know if Mr. This guy here, in the penumbra, this is still considered to be in the penumbra because part of him is in the penumbra. Not in the penumbra. Not in the penumbra. But the problem is if he's over here, He's still not in the penumbra, but it kind of looks like he is because he's still within these two angles. So that's the case we have to special case we have to deal with. Um, so yes. Uh, by the way, if you want to join me on Discord or audio somehow, I think we can make that happen. If you prefer to continue from chat, that's fine too. Uh, I know chat is not the best way to sort of co-learn, uh, but it's what I've got for right now. And so I'm, I'm going to offer uh, the Discord uh, if you want. Um, okay, why is this not in the penumbra? So you're asking me why is this not in the penumbra? He is in the intersection of these thingy thingy. Yes, he is. Um, so what we're looking for is, um, so what we're looking for here is where, and I need to shrink this down a little bit, so give me a sec here. Unfortunately, my text apparently doesn't want to shrink down. Um, so what we're looking for, this is like the sun. This is like a planet, and we want to know where you can see a partial eclipse of the sun from this planet. So if you're over here, you will. If you're over here, you'll see the sun on one side and the planet on the other side. There's no eclipse here. 
In fact, this is more of an opposition than an eclipse. So, so if you're in this little re region here, um, you're not seeing an eclipse of the sun by T. You're just, you just happen to be within this, you know, the mathematical way we express it, you happen to be in this sort of weird place where you're within this cone, but you're not, you're not far enough away to see the eclipse. Uh, so what happens when, so what happens? Light gets blocked. That is correct. If you're anywhere in the penumbra, anywhere in here, at least, a, at least some of the light coming from S will be blocked by T. You will have a partial eclipse. In fact, if you're in certain points, you would have a total eclipse, but that's not important. Right now, we just want to say, if you're over here, for example, you'll have a partial eclipse because you can't, if you wanted to look at this part of the sun here, from here, you, would, you wouldn't be able to do it because you'd have to go through T because part of T is blocking part of S. So what, what happens is that gets blocked. Correct. So we're looking for the points where the light is being blocked at least partially. Okay. And we know it's over here. Now the one problem is um, if we had just a single point in space, this would not be that difficult. I mean, it would still be somewhat difficult. Uh, interesting. Thank you. That, I think that's the first time anyone's used that word to my screen. Um, so if we, if we had, th the problem is that um, the position we know for the planet we're looking at, we know its center. Um, we know the center of this planet, and we know its radius. So we can't quite assume that the, the center of the planet has to be within the eclipse, uh, it within the penumbra, because it could be this situation here, where this part of the planet is experiencing an eclipse, but the center is not. In fact, Center of ma the center of mass, or we're assuming all planets are spheres, so we're assuming the center is the geograph is the center of a sphere. Uh, planets are not spheres. This is one of the one of the issues that actually comes up. Uh, the library I'm using, the C library I'm using, C Spice, will tell you when there's a penumbral eclipse of the center of a body. So it would tell you here, and tell you here, tell you here. It would even give you the correct answer here and say there's no eclipse. But unfortunately, it won't tell you when like there's a boundary condition eclipse, and I couldn't find a way to coerce it to do that. And yes, that is tricky. Um, somewhere in here I've got a diagram that actually explains what happens. Um, yeah, this is the diagram that shows you, if you happen to know the angle between, you know, if this is your planet here, and you know the central angle between that you and something, you can compute the two angles of the edges. Let's consider the angle between E and T. Okay, let's go back here. Um, yes, that's what I was saying that, um, I mean, looking at the angle between P and E is fine for like 99% of the cases. Um, th the only problem is when you get into this little stupid case here, the angle between P and E seems to say you're in the penumbra, but it, you're really not. I mean, you're really, you're really sort of you know, that's where it becomes the tricky situation. And here we could consider the angle between E and T, um, and which would be because we have this, when we say E and T, T is a point. We mean um, the vector that goes in this direction. This would be a huge number when compared to T. This would be like greater, well, it'd be greater than 90 degrees. And if it happened to be right here, it'd be 180 degrees. If it's right here, it turns out because angles are measured, um, the way we measure angles is we take the smaller angle, it's going to be still greater than 90, but less than 180. Um, yeah, here's the point. So you're saying this angle is zero, counterclockwise. Uh, correct. Here's the problem. Let me actually go ahead and draw something that I didn't was trying not to draw earlier. PT is facing the wrong direction for this part of the problem. Let me go ahead and actually draw a vector. Um, um, Starting point and then end point. Yeah, I think I can do that. Starting point and then end point. Um, so the vector TG now, that's actually the vector we're considering the angle from, from either PG or TG. The PT happens to be pointing in the wrong direction. Um, so we're measuring our angles from uh, what I guess it's, damn it, sorry. What it's calling V right now. We'll move this, oh, no, no, crap. I don't want to move the, there we go. Yeah, we're measuring angles from what we're calling uh, TG or PG, the vector V pointing in the direction from S to T. This PT is for a different reason. It's the negative of this one, but it's it's pointing in the wrong direction. What's chat? Uh, 
Real part is P, and okay. What? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Um, yes, it's negative P. Yes, this is absolutely negative P. I mean, at least I haven't drawn it the length of. Sorry, yeah, it's um, sorry P T. This is P T, not P. Um, this is the vector P T, which I sh should be calling T P because it has a tail in T and goes to P. So I'm a bad person from not calling it T P. But it turns out that. Because of the stuff I'm doing, I want to call it PT. But this is in the direction of negative PT. The length doesn't matter because we're measuring an angle off of it. We don't care how long it is. Complex numbers. Um, we could use complex numbers here and say that this is the uh, real axis here and this is the uh, imaginary axis instead of calling these the x and y axes. I don't see that there's a benefit to that. Um, and I mean, unless you're seeing something I don't, I don't see that there's a real benefit. Uh, the, the library I'm using, um, let me go ahead and look at, look at it briefly here in, uh, in uh, well, that's not really helpful. The library I'm using deals with real numbers, and, and it does 90% of the work. And by 90%, I mean a lot of the work. Um, because of my eye, I am unsure. I don't know if that was a joke, but it's pretty funny. We are not going to be using complex numbers here. Uh, we're using x and y axes. I mean, complex numbers Complex numbers can describe a vector, but I think you're thinking of the quaternions. Uh, for example, if you have a vector, um, you know, x, y, z, you can define it as uh, i, j, k. Uh, that's, that's the quaternions. But it helps to describe the angle. Um, maybe, because you could talk about the, you know, you can talk about... Um, you can talk about complex numbers as having an x and y coordinate, meaning a plus bi, or you can consider that having a length, which is the norm of, you know, square root of a squared plus b squared, and an angle, which is the arctangent of b over a. So certainly, yes, you can do angles in, in simple complex numbers. You can do angles in quaternions as well. Um, yes, e to the i phi, <laughs> r e to the i phi, that is the, uh, r would be the radius, um, yeah, polar coordinates. You could do that, yes. Um, and, and certainly that is another way to approach this problem. Um, right now I've approached it as an XY because the library I'm using does... We could certainly add a library that does complex numbers, but I don't think we need it. And that's, that's what I'm saying. Um, I think all we need here is so... When this angle is like this, we want to return the value 0, saying there's no eclipse. It's like this, we want to return 1. You know, this isn't even a com total eclipse. It's just a like the best, the closest you can get to lining up st and your and your e. Um, and then anywhere between here and here, so zero, maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. We want to return a number between zero and one. Um, and the reason we want to do that is we want to sort of not only say whether e is being eclipsed, but how close are we to an eclipse? For example, this is a lot closer to an eclipse than this. Um, so we sort of want to use, we're using a mathematical, we're using a um, numerical estimator that, and it's helped by how, you know, if it knows that you're close to an eclipse, it can use that information to find the time of the eclipse more accurately. Um, I think, that might not even be true. So for most of this, we're fine. We can just measure the angle between uh, V and E. So, you know, that's fine. The only thing that doesn't really work, from P. We can't measure the angle from T because these, this umbral cone, this penumbral cone here, doesn't have a well-defined relation to T. Yeah, it is tricky, unfortunately. It does have a well-defined relation to P. It's basically if you're within this, which we happen to, the angle is going to be two times U. It's going to be U here by uh, symmetry and vertical angles. This is going to be the angle U. So if we know where you're within U, or actually U plus whatever this ra this angle is, uh, you're in an eclipse mode. But the problem is over here we have this sort of, we, we're not really sure what to return here. Um, and first of all, we need to make sure we, we take care of this case because otherwise, um, and what's unusual here is if you're actually within this little area here, uh, then as viewed from T, you are eclipsing the sun. Um, the eclipse is now backwards. Instead of T eclipsing the sun, you know, instead of having an eclipse by T, you have an eclipse of T by E. But it turns out we don't really want to, I don't really want to kind of use that as, as the, the reverse eclipse. I want to set up the problem 
like this and ignore this special case here where E happens to be between S and T. Um, so what I was saying is if we, if we have the case where E is closer to P than T is, in other words, it's in this sort of circle here, um, between that it's, it's closer, we return a different value. And the value we could return there is, um, and, and the only thing is we want to return it so it's like saying you're far away from an eclipse. Um, because we, you know, we're saying that if you're over here, not only are you not being eclipsed, you're nowhere near an eclipse. You have to get all the way over here to get to the eclipse. Um, and I'm not quite sure how to do that because of the weirdness of the way this, this thing works. We can't use the angle from P because according to P, you're really close to an eclipse. Uh, we could use the angle from T. Another possibility is we could just return like a value like um, negative one or something that says you're far away from an eclipse and you're so far from an eclipse we're going to just say negative one. That's an other possibility there. Um, and returning the, the, uh, see the problem is, the problem is at some point, the real super ugliness here is, um, now nah, sounds lame, um, the real super ugliness here is, as this planet, or you know, does whatever it's doing, um, there's going to come a time when it's just further than P, you know, it's equivalent distant P, T, P are equal, so then we're still using the, this uh, measure here, this angle here, to return how much of an eclipse we have. The moment it slips past, gets closer than t, we're going to use a different value. We're going to basically compute the value differently. And I'm not convinced there's a way to do that that is, that is smooth. Um, well, there probably is, actually. I mean, we could figure out what... Okay, hang on. So if this is an isosceles triangle... Um, this angle is going to be u, which means the thing we're returning is going to be minus u over, oh god, it's going to be hideous. What is p doing? Is, th is this just, yes it is. p is defined as the intersection, okay, so if you're at p, I mean, you're, this is, you're clearly, clearly not being eclipsed. The, the thing that's true at p is that the angular radius here of S and the angular radius here of T are equivalent. Uh, this is also the point where if you draw the tangent, this is by the way, a, this is a tangent point here. I haven't drawn it as a right angle, but it is. And this tangent, the, uh, the cone here is what defines, the cone through P is here is what defines where you're seeing a partial eclipse. Okay, so P is defined like that. We, we've computed P. In fact, all of these computations here have been moved to the, to the C code and we, we know all of these points. We're now sort of at the point of trying to figure out um, how to say how close are you to an eclipse. Um, to be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure we need to use um, a smooth function. In theory, we could return one the moment you cross this line and zero the moment you, you know, the moment you're out of the eclipse. And then zero whenever you're over here in this weird land where you're at the, uh, in the opposition position of, of uh, uh, S and T, not the, not the eclipse position. The reason this became an issue yesterday was um, I was trying to find lunar eclipses and one of the results I got was a solar eclipse because the moon was you know, in this little angle here but it wasn't at the far side of the earth so it wasn't being eclipsed, rather it was doing the eclipsing. Um, Unsure smooth would imply linearity. Um, well, I shouldn't have said smooth. I should have said linear. Uh, no, no, it's not going to be linear. Y you're correct. Smooth would just mean continuous. So in other words, if you're at exactly distance t from p, I want this measure, th you know, the one, we, the one we have earlier, this one that we've defined, uh, minus the, the angle over umbral angle plus radian angle plus 1, which we're pretty happy with for when you're in this area or over here, to have the same value as if you, whatever measure we're going to give when you're closer than t. Because the moment you cross this line, you're closer than t, and now you have a separate if statement doing the calculation. So you're right, it wouldn't be linear, but it would at least be continuous um, if we did this. And the problem is the value we really want, you know, for the continuity, the value we want is, um, okay, so the angle here is, sorry. The angle here is 2u if this is an isosceles triangle. I 
think. Yeah, it is, because this is U, this is a right angle, this is 2U. So we would kind of want to return minus 2U over um ang plus rad ang. Oh, but hang on a second, hang on, hang on, plus 1, because that's what we're returning. But hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, I think U is the umbral angle. It is. So sorry, we have here uh, minus 2U over u plus rad ang plus 1. Mm, still ugly, though. And, and the ugliness comes from the fact that we're not looking at a point. We're looking at this sort of radius thing here, too. Ah. So I am this close to saying F it. And... Because the, 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 the C library, the C spice library that I'm using will handle booleans just fine. However, it's, I mean, obviously you have to do a binary search to figure out when a boolean value changes. Uh, if you have a continuous value, uh, you don't need a boolean search. You can use a, you can use derivatives and a more, you know, more of a um, uh, binary, you can, u you can use better algorithms if you have a function that is, that is continuous as opposed to one that is just you know zero to one and jumps at a certain point. Um, at the same time, I'm starting not to care. So, and this does have some really nice boolean. Um, this does have some really nice boolean functions. You can't really see them from from over here. Um, user defined. Oh wow, came just happened to come right upon it. So th it does have some nice ways of finding whether a boolean is zero or one or true or false. Um, so I'm, I'm tempted maybe to just say, you know, all of this uh, sort of pedantic stuff about trying to find out, trying to give you a hint as to how close you are to be eclipsing, may not actually matter. So, um, so I will, and you know, anytime I do stuff like this, I can always put in the code to do, can we do this better? Because I'm doing a hack here. So if we're binary, then it's really easy. You're in an eclipse if your angle, uh, well, actually, the absolute value of your angle is less than the umbral angle plus the little radial angle that you have here, and you are further from P than T is. That's just a very simple AND condition we could apply. Um, and then, and then we would, of course, test this condition. But I mean, that would be a very, very simple thing to test: return true or false, and then let the binary subroutine figure out where it's true and where it's false. I don't think that's a huge deal. Um, if you have any better ideas, or if you would like to say anything, pretty much, uh, Fierce Crocodile. And by the way, Fierce Crocodile, because he's following me, I want to give him a shout out. Uh, this is how, this is not how his name looks, because I keep forgetting, I can't cut and paste between my VM and my real machine. Um, so this is him. He's not a Unix command, but you should follow him. Um, yeah, if you can do this, it is. This is nice. I agree. That it would be very nice if we could not just say zero or one. We could sort of say, yeah, you know, you're close to an eclipse. I mean, you know, so kind of look at shorter time periods to see eclipse. Uh, and here, you are very far from an eclipse. This is about the furthest from an eclipse you can be. If you're along this line, you're about as far from the penumbra as you can be, assuming that the planet. Now, uh, the problem, of course, the planet is probably rotating around the sun, so you. Um, I'm sorry, this could be a moon here too, so we don't really know where what you're rotating around. Uh, but we, and, and we kind of don't want to know. I mean, I think the difficulty is when you're in the intersection of G. In other words, when you're in this area, you mean? Had to reload. Well, welcome back. Yeah. The, pro the, the real problem is when you're in this little area here where your angle between P, PT, I should say, because it's a vector, and P and E, PTPE vector, is small, but you're not in the lumbral eclipse, b you're not in the penumbral eclipse, because <laughs> the penumbral eclipse is way the hell out here. Uh, I was thinking maybe when you see an eclipse on one part, uh, yes, keep going. And, and yes, if you're in this part, you actually have a, you're the one doing the eclipsing instead of being eclipsed. That's kind of a weirdness there. Um, from which site you come sife you come from side you come from it is it is definitely um, now another problem here is even though I have this lined up on the x and y axes uh, 
this is only for the diagram. In real life, the point T is going to have some three-dimensional value that is going to be just weird. Same with the point S, same with the vector PT. All of these things are actually arbitrary points in three dimensions that we've just moved into two dimensions to make these calculations. I thought I am on Earth, and E is the moon. Um, yeah, let me, okay, sure, for lunar eclipses that is true. Uh, in fact, yeah, let me go ahead and rename this um, the moon. I mean, I'll rename it M, not the moon necessarily. Okay, let me go back one step before we continue with that. Um, these are arbitrary. Uh, these are not, I mean, you're correct. And when you're talking about a lunar eclipse, this is the sun, this is the earth, this is the moon. And, it, you, and I've, they're, they're not drawn to scale even close, but, you know, the moon is the smallest of the three. But uh, the Earth is spinning. That's not actually an issue here because we're only concerned with the sphere of the Earth, whether or not there's an uh, eclipse somewhere. We don't care where the eclipse is for right now. But here's the problem. Here's the, the more generic problem. This is not, this is actually to compute arbitrary eclipses in our solar system not just for lunar eclipses. We're focusing on lunar right now because we happen to be looking at the sun, earth, and moon. We also want to focus on solar eclipses because that's basically the same thing with these two flipped. But our large scale goal is to look at eclipses. I mean, I think the title of the stream is Jovian Lunar Eclipses or something. I don't even remember anymore. Um, so just map it to the angle and then look maybe what happens. Uh, the probability sum to one. Y yes, um, it is uniformly distributed. Do clue. We don't. Yeah. Unfortunately, I did do that. I set this to be the angles earlier, just looking at the angle from P. Um, the problem is, I literally got you know. So this is a lunar eclipse. This is a solar eclipse because now the moon is between the sun and the earth. I literally got solar eclipses as part of my result, and I don't want them there. I do not want solar eclipses. Um, and it was shittier, but yeah, basically I ended up getting solar eclipses uh, when I was looking for lunar eclipses. Now you might say that's kind of a bonus, and it sort of is, but in what I'm doing it really isn't, because it's, I'm trying to c com come up with lunar eclipses, and to be honest, I'm trying to come up with lunar eclipses where this is, this is the sun, this is Jupiter, and this is one of Jupiter's moons. Um, so again, if you're in this weird position here, um, Jupiter's moons are far too small to completely eclipse the sun. So if you're on Jupiter, what you see here is like a little partial eclipse of the sun. Um, what are solar eclipse star? A solar eclipse occurs when uh, a, t a, okay, a partial solar eclipse occurs when wherever you are, uh, you, so if, if you're on the moon here and you're looking at this diagram, the sun is totally eclipsed. You cannot see any part of the sun. If you're in the moon and you're over here, um, sorry, that was kind of a mistake. If you're in the moon and you're over here, then you're seeing a partial eclipse of the sun. A portion of the sun is being blocked by T. Um, and and <laughs> and the reverse can so so this is this is actually kind of a a weirdness here. One way to look for lunar eclipses is to pretend that you're on the moon. If there's a lunar eclipse, um, the Earth is blocking some of your light from the sun. So a lunar eclipse for the Earth is a solar eclipse for the moon. Kind of, sort of. Okay. So that's why these terms are sort of interchangeable. Um, so if you're on the moon and you're looking at the Earth in this position, uh, you can say the Earth is partially eclipsed, which it is. You're eclipsing it. For the Earth, it's a solar eclipse. Uh, so the, there's sort of a... Um, I sort of go into this... Let me, let, me, let me just... Let's just go ahead and go totally crazy here. Um, wow. Uh, there is... Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> It's right in the, what we call the, uh, um, let's go all the way back here because we haven't visited this for a while. Lots of references. Sounds like one minus, okay, didn't quite catch that. But yeah, let's go, go ahead. This is where this all started. 
Someone wanted to know how often are there lunar eclipses on Jupiter? Jupiter has like a bajillion moons. Yes, you were on Stack Exchange. Yes, that is where this all started. Um, and the question is how often are there lunar eclipses on Jupiter? I did give a partial answer. Ooh, somebody else gave a much better answer. Uh, but I did give an answer too. Somewhere down here. And I got 13 points for it, even though I clearly pointed out it's wrong. Um, a one minus, yes, yes, you are correct. Uh, yes, the, how much of the planet is being eclipsed is an issue. Uh, so zero, of you know, what percentage of the planet is seeing a partial eclipse? And that is exactly what this, this number um, can tell you. You know, zero percent, zero percent. Okay, now we have like about five percent, ten, fifty percent now, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent moves out, and so on. Yeah, that that's exactly what I was trying to get out of this formula. What percentage of M is being eclipsed, um, even partially? So you know, um, the thing I only care about though is is any part of the planet being partially eclipsed, and it turns out that's that's a different question. You have to add these, uh, you didn't account for these problems. Yes, in fact, I point out here, I point out here that I'm wrong. Um, it only computes, and let me, um, let me explain this in a little bit more detail because I don't think I've explained it to anyone even, even previously on the stream. Um, okay. And so, okay, what? Um, that you didn't account for, yeah. Um, the library I'm using called CSpice has a very nice um, function um, that will t that will tell you when there's there's an eclipse of something, um, and in fact you can even compute it online. Um, uh, and I and I think I showed even how you could do it. Um, in fact, let's go over here. This is actually a pretty good image to be looking at here. I think, I hope, unless I did it wrong. Um, occultation event finder. I mean, you could simulate it. Gosh, you have questions. And look at the result distribution on Clue. I'm not sure what you mean there exactly. Um, so you can actually go to this website and you could do this as programmatically too and ask occultation finder. Jupiter blocks the sun as observed from Io. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Um, so this looks beautiful. I mean, this I thought was the answer. This looks great, right? If you're on Io and you see the, um, and you see, um, the front body Jupiter eclipsing the back body of the sun, you have a solar eclipse on Io, which means you have a lunar eclipse on Jupiter. Looks beautiful, but there's a problem about this. That's how people, something, things, how they made numerical computation and wait like a minute, there's some regularities. Uh, I realize you're trying to type very fast to keep up. Um, and you're correct. This is, of course, back in the olden days. And this is actually even astrology. Uh, this is why astronomy, in some sense, owes a debt to astrology. Early astrologers and astronomers would keep track of where the planets were because they don't follow a, uh, as observed from Earth, the moon and the sun sort of follow a regular, they follow, a, you know, they sort of go in a circle. Not exactly, though. Uh, the planets don't do that at all because it turns out they're orbiting the sun. It's much more complicated. Um, so, so there's a library. Of course, now we, we're sort of, we have a nice library that will compute where the planets are at any given time. Um, but the problem we, and we could, you know, you could use them online. There's the Horizons, um, Horizons website. Um, and there's this website, which this is just an image, but I mean, this is how you, um, so this is, this looks like the perfectly correct way of s uh, showing when there's a lunar eclipse of Io because Io is seeing, in the, you know, the sun is blocked by Jupiter. Turns out this doesn't work because this Io here, Io being one of Jupiter's moons, means the center of Io. And are they not right? Well, they are correct. Um, but the problem, here's the big problem. Io is one of the moons, of, one of the four moons of Jupiter. I really, yeah, and really, um, I, I like choosing Io as my example moon, but it's the worst possible because Io looks like it's a one zero. It has lots, it's a the short name. Um, if you want, you can pretend I'm saying Ganymede here. 
Ganymede, Europa, Callisto, and Io are the four big moons of Jupiter. So if you want, you can pretend I'm saying Ganymede. So you would think this is accurate. You would think this is saying when there's a solar eclipse. Uh, sorry, a lunar eclipse of Io, a solar eclipse on Io. But it turns out, uh, if you go all and you look at the documentation, this will tell you when, let's see, I don't know Ganymede either. Well, at least Ganymede doesn't sound like everything else. Io sounds like one zero, could be a binar. I know Dynamite. Uh, dynamite is not one of the moons of Jupiter. Uh, it's not even one of the smaller moons. I don't think they would name a moon Dynamite. But uh, Callisto, Ganymede, Europa, and Io are the four big moons of Jupiter that can be viewed by a uh, binoculars, and they're the ones that Galileo discovered. They're called the Galilean moons. It's possible somebody saw them before he did, because you know binoculars and te telescopes they actually uh, existed before Gal Galileo did not actually invent the telescope. He was the first person to point it at the sky, uh, but people had used uh, you know terrestrial telescopes before that. Uh, yes, Io is also in and out. One and it looks like a one zero, like an off on switch. Worst possible name for me to you know uh, for me to use as a moon. It turns out there's also a, an asteroid called Io. So there, this is really really effed up me using Io. So let's pretend we're talking about Ganymede or another moon of Jupiter. It's got like 70 of the damn things. And the problem with this, whatever this observer is, this would say that there's an eclipse for someone who's at the center of Io. Uh, this is great if there were people at the center of Io. There's not even people on the surface of Io, but or Ganymede or whatever. Um, but the problem is you could very easily have an eclipse on the surface of something, even if it doesn't reach the center. In fact, if you're on Earth and you're seeing a solar eclipse, uh, it's I think you can actually guarantee that the umbral cone never reaches the center of the Earth. Uh, if you could live at the center of the Earth and the Earth were transparent or something, you would still never be able to see a total solar eclipse because the umbra just doesn't reach that far. Um, so what's going on on this moon? Well, on this moon, this is where we have to go through the whole uh, crap of putting a surface. We have to put a circle around the moon. So the, the library would very happily tell me right here, oh, now you're in an eclipse. Now you're not in an eclipse. But that's not true. You still are part of it. still in an eclipse. Uh, OK, so what's going on? OK, so the library I'm using would very happily tell you uh, right now, you're in an eclipse because the center point of the world is in the penumbra. But here, it would say you're not in an eclipse because the center point is not in the penumbra. The problem is, yeah, the center point isn't in the penumbra, but part of the surface still is. Partial, sure, yeah. Um, you would think that this library would have a way of, of, of doing that, um, of telling you when just part of the planet is within the penumbra instead of the middle of the planet, which were, you know, is really, <laughs> it's sort of a sort of a fantasy that someone could live there. You know, 25% maybe, whatever. Uh, once 50% is in, even my library will, the library will tell you. Because at this point it's saying, oh yeah, you're, you're now you're in an eclipse. But the problem is if it's less than 50%, it won't tell you because it only looks at the center point. In fact, you might say, well, that, that can't be correct. I mean, why would anyone write such a stupid library? Uh, unfortunately, if you actually look at the documentation, um, and the function is called GFOCLTC, um, find an occultation. And what the library says here, find occult so it's find occultations of the sun by the moon, solar eclipses, as seen from the center of the earth. See that word, center of the earth? Um, what's called bounding boxes. Uh, the circles are the easy, well, bounding boxes are the rectangles that would s surround the circles. Uh, the problem, this is the word we don't like here, center. Circles, you don't, you don't need to take square roots. You can always, if you're comparing two distances, you don't have to take the square roots. You can just look at the norms squared, compare them, uh, and, and you're fine. And in fact, you can do, no, you would take circles if you can. Um, maybe. When it comes to doing computations, uh, bounding boxes uh, are actually a lot easier. Uh, in fact, I think that, uh, yeah, so whatever. But the problem, of course, here is um, finding total and partial eclipses on the surface of the Earth is much more difficult. And that, I don't see that they have a function for this. I mean, maybe they do, and I don't see it. Um, 
Oh, by the way, this is the, the Besselian. This is not my diagram. This is uh, the idea that Bessel had the Besselian elements um, that, that makes it easier to compute whether you're seeing a partial or total eclipse or neither or some. I think the implementation from circles is easiest. I, th I think I agree with you. Um, I mean, the easiest would be if over here, find occultation type, that's fine. Occultation event, hang on, there might be another one. Find occultation. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find occultations. Eclipses are a special type of occultation. And the only problem is this function will not let you use as your, um, you won't let you look at occultations from the surface only from the center. And that's not useful in our case. And those are the only three functions that deal with occultations in this SPICE library. Shit, that's even 3D. Yes, yes it is. These are spheres, of course. Um, and what we're showing here in the Vesalian elements is you can take this 3D problem and reduce it to two dimensions. Uh, and I think that is the big, big thing that... Um, uh, it was so successful that it still remains the most powerful. And, oh, Fred Espinac is actually a great guy. He does a lot of this stuff. Um, so what you do is you pass this plane through the center of the Earth, the XY plane, and then it turns out you can do pretty much everything from this plane and, and the Z plane. Uh, I mean, you have, you have a very convenient field of view now. Um, and so he, does, he goes through all this stuff, the Cartesian coordinates of the lunar axis shadow as projected into the XY plane, all this good stuff, and he doesn't do the calculations here, though. Let's start with 2D. Well, in fact, you can reduce the problem to 2D. Um, you get like a projection, that is correct. Um, but I, what I've done here is actually a little bit different. If you have any a two point, if you have any three points in space, no matter where they are, you can construct a plane out of three points. Three points defines a plane. Um, so that's what I did here, and I showed that if S and T are in a plane, uh, the line that, you know, you could, you could draw, the, all of this stuff can be drawn inside of a plane, the plane that's shared by ST, S is the sun, T is the planet that's doing the eclipsing, and I'm calling it Q, but you don't see it here, Q is the planet that's being eclipsed. Um, so yes, you can do all of this problem almost entirely in 2D. Um, but now you have this problem of, um, even in 2D the problem is, well, even if you're not eclipsing the center of something, you might be eclipsing one of its edges. Uh, and, and that's where I'm trying to find out when partial eclipses begin and end. Uh, we will move on to, the, uh, to this diagram here, the umbral diagram, and that occurs when you're within this little area here. Uh, you're within the shadow where T is completely blocking S. You have a total eclipse. Uh, this area, again, is sort of the weird area where you're still within the correct angle, but you're not seeing a total eclipse because T and S are on the wrong sides. They're in opposition to each other. Um, so that's the problem explained uh, again, and what we're trying to do now is we're trying to find a, and I was hoping to find a nice little thing that says 0% eclipsed, 1% eclipsed, 100% eclipsed, and negative 15% eclipsed or whatever, meaning you're nowhere near having an eclipse, so you know, you can, you can kind of make an assumption that you can go quite a bit further. Um, so that would be a very nice smooth function that tell that a smoothly changing function that tells you whether or not you are eclipsed or not. Um, the problem is, um, well, the problem is basically this region here. I mean, otherwise you could just measure this angle between V and, uh, so P, to, you know, the angle P, the angle, sorry, the vector V going from P to what's called G here, and PM. That vector would tell you exactly how eclipsed you are, if it wasn't for this little area here. Okay. So, that is the issue. Uh, unfortunately, the other issue is I am beginning, it's, I've been streaming for about an hour. I would like to continue the stream later. I am getting a little hypoglycemic. I probably need to eat food so I don't, you know, die. Um, I actually have a little bit of time. I'm not, I'm not that hypoglycemic. Um, but I do need to eat uh, some food. So I'm going to ask you, Fierce Crocodile, um, do you want to come back to this stream later? We could schedule a time and actually an array intersection with a disk. Yes, that is correct. Um, this is array, and this is a disk, and this is the inter this is 
This is the trivial intersection. This is an intersection where there's only a part of the intersection. So I think I think that's where we are. Uh, would you like to, to figure out exactly how much is intersected? That is that is exactly the problem. Except in what I'm doing, I don't really care how much is intersected. I just need to know when there is any part of the sphere that is touched that is being eclipsed. That is my concern. For what I'm doing, that's my only concern. So I may just turn this into a binary function that says yes, you are, or no, you're not being eclipsed. But the pr it's not really a probability. I mean, unless you're saying. If you're standing in a random location on the planet, what is the probability that you're witnessing an eclipse? That that's the same as asking what percentage of the sphere is of the surface of the sphere is being eclipsed. Um, I am going to go now. I'm going to have to stop the stream. Um, if you want, you can continue to talk to me. That's boring. I'm sorry if it's boring, uh, <laughs> and it is a little bit boring. I mean, you're right. It just you know, just saying somewhere on the. Um, and the reason I'm doing all that crap, by the way, is because if you go to this site here, it the times it gives you, the things I can check against, are the first, any place in the world is seeing a partial eclipse, and then any place in the world is no, no longer seeing a partial eclipse. That Those are the times I'm looking at. Uh, all right, see you later. Feel free to keep talking on this chat if you want to schedule the time. Uh, you know, when I come back on the stream, if you want to be there, and if you want to... Um, if you want to, you know, voice over or something, do a little bit of a voice chat, uh, we can certainly do that, because uh, I know it's hard to type all these questions in, in chat. So I'm going to stop the stream now, but Fierce Crocodile, please feel free to continue chatting with me. I will still be in the chat. All right, thank you for watching. Stopping the stream now. Should hopefully hope to come back later today.